when you were looking to get uh, the last saint funded, you were basically introduced to a whole bunch of people saying, no, hell no, and piss off, we don't want to fund your movie. And yet the very idea of a Polynesian-centric crime drama seems like something the New Zealand Film Commission, for example, would jump at the chance to fund. What, what would keep someone from funding your movie? <laughs> I don't know, but they did, a, they did a good job. I wish I knew the answer for that. Um, no, it just didn't. Uh, you know, they've got their quotas and, and, uh, and their tastes and stuff that, that have to be answered, you know, and I think that, um, look, you know, it's, for whatever reason, you know, I, I, we've passed the question about why it didn't get funded. Um, the question was why were we so persistent in wanting to tell the story? And uh, the fact is that the, we, we couldn't afford to let the story go untold because that very same thing that you brought up in the question, which is, you know, a, a sort of, a, a, a not, not so much just a Polynesian, but a Pacific-based kind of crime, drama, thriller thing, um, urban and contemporary. It just hadn't been done before. And we felt that the audience is out there. We felt that the audience was sophisticated enough to handle it. I mean, it's 20 years since, last, since Once Were Warriors. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and uh, 20 years, and there hasn't really been anything that's sort of come near that in terms of uh, mixing the, uh, the, you know, like uh, the physicality and the social questions, you know, uh, with, with violence and, and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we thought that, you know, that the time was, was, was rough and it wasn't time to dwell on whether or not people agreed with us, <laughs> even though they, you know, they would have made it easier for us if they'd given us some money, but it just wasn't to well, be. How much were you asking for? Oh, just, a, just a basic thing. It's, it's, it's just a basic, uh, look, whatever we were asking for, they weren't having it. Yeah. You know, so. so what was the budget that you ended up getting or um, ending up, ended up gaining from Well, you know, we shot the film on $105,000. $105,000. And um, so if, you, if you had to... Um, that's my challenge to everybody out there, man. <laughs> you make a film that looks like that for $105,000, I wish you all the best. And yeah. also made on a hell of a lot of favours. Yeah. If you had to put a quota on the price of how many favours yeah. you managed to get from people in support of this movie, what would be your estimate? Uh, it's, you know, I don't know. You, you, you never get enough, you know. Yeah. I mean, well, we'll just put that into perspective. Uh, Dark Horse was, uh, I think, about four mil. Yeah. Um, the closest that you can kind of uh, put it into, like, some kind of thing is where you get, like, the Escalator series, which you have um, Orphans and Kingdoms and that filmed for, like, $250,000. Same right? with Fantail. Yeah. But then you look at those guys are still, you know, you need about half a mil. And then that's, I don't know whether that's including post, you know? Yeah. But we, we shot for the 105 and then the post put on top of that was another couple of hundred thousand dollars. So all up, there's, you know, the last say cost a massive amount of $300,000 roundabout. It's and, a colossal uh, effort to oh, yeah. not only just make a film in New Zealand, but to also self-fund it and self-distribute it, which is what you guys have done. So clearly you were passionate about the story. And what, why, why are we so motivated to tell an Auckland-based story about peer addiction and myth culture? Oh, well, that was a story that came to me, really, you know? I mean, no, no one's sort of, you know, you're getting smashed by, uh, by funding bodies. You're not sort of, um, you know, if it's too tough, go and do something else. You know what I mean? It's just uh, no one's forcing you to do it. But we felt compelled to tell the story, uh, probably because there's, like, there's nothing out there that's like it. Um, also, you know, there was a very successful... Um, Australian film that I saw a couple of years ago called Animal Kingdom, which I thought was, uh, which I thought was amazing in that <clears throat> it really captured the Australian criminal sub subgenre really well, you know. And, and um, but then I thought with Kiwis, <laughs> I thought, you know, we can do it better. <laughs> and uh, it was really funny. Um, there was a um, we got selected for the Melbourne Breakthrough. Uh, for the breakthrough section of the Melbourne International Film Festival, right? And the film hasn't, it's still not finished. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we got, we got selected for it and Q&A, one of our producers was over there and they said, oh, you know, mate, that was awesome what you guys did, how you could do that on such a crappy budget of two million. 
<laughs> like, what's he, two million? <laughs> oh my. Man, if we had two million bucks, oh. <laughs> you could make know. 10, 20. <laughs> you could have shot 10 movies, man. <laughs> But so they, 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 to the point of they thought we were lying, you know, that's, um, you know, and uh, yeah, whereas basically when you have no money and all you have is talent around you, like we know, I knew we had amazing uh, talented actors, crew and everybody. The guys are aware of the story, the actors for the last year, year and a half. So they've just been waiting, fizzing for the opportunity to, you know, to let loose to get let loose, so. Yeah, yeah so what we, what we didn't have with money, you know, we had with, with uh, we more than made up for that with talent and, um, and focus, you know. And, you know, far up, you know, everybody knows, there's heaps of stories filled with, you know, where you've got uh, an, ama an amazing budget, but the film's still shit, because nobody gives a damn about it. Yeah, we've, we've funded some pretty crappy films in the past, let it be said. Um, oh, yeah. Now, your brother Joe, he runs this gym and you run it with him, the Lewis Max, uh, Magnus. Um, do you see filmmaking as something you can jump from the gym to making films um, as a career move or do you see it more as filmmaking as a hobby at this point? No, um, no I wouldn't say that it's as a hobby, but what I'd say is that if you're going to dedicate yourself to filmmaking, um, you better be prepared to wear a whole lot of different hats because it's a very difficult um, field to stay entirely focused on. I mean, at least unless you want to stay at home and live with your, you know, with your parents and, and that's all good and, and let them you know, uh, carry the, the, the majority of like funding, you, <laughs> you know, eating you and you know, feeding you and all that kind of stuff. But in terms of... Um, uh, you've got to diversify and you've got to, you know, you've got to be able to do a whole lot of different things, you know, and, and have a build a really good community around you. Like have a really good community of actors, creatives, you know, camera people, sound people, um, wardrobe people and all that and practice. Yeah. And just go out and practice shooting the weekends. You know, don't wait for 48 hours, you know, which only happens once a year. You know, go out and do it with your mates all the time. And just make yourselves better. And, um, get used to and be really honest with your self-criticism and self-appraisal. Because that's the, that's the best thing that you're gonna have, right? Because if you've got a really good inbuilt bullshit detector, then that's gonna say, like that's the, that's the whole thing why we were walking through fighting with the Film Commission, was that they would tell us something like, look us straight, and, and I just, at the end of the day, I just had to say, you know, go do things to yourself. Because, uh, um, because, if I took on board like their criticism, well, we wouldn't have the main actor for one thing, because they said he can't act. <laughs> Just think, everything that you happen to like in the film, they hated. Okay, so basically, when we were going through the process, we were like the kind of the really ugly, ugly, unpopular kid in school, who was getting like just told off by the prefix, like your shit. <laughs> you know, like what are you doing in this school? Yeah, yeah, that that was me. I was just raising my hand. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You all right? <laughs> I just, I'm just recalling the past, but yeah. Oh, carry oh on. sorry. <laughs> no, my bad, man. I didn't <laughs> click. My bad. Fuck, what a dick. Sorry, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, no, no. Um, well, well, basically, we were that you know horrible little snot nosed acne faced kid, and that got told to piss off in the corner. Like, really, that's how we were treated. Yeah, that's the way we were treated. Like, you know. And, um, but instead of it getting down, getting us down, we kind of got together as a collective and said, okay, all right, we need to make this work. So, you know, that kid stops eating junk food, cuts off the crap, yeah. starts washing their face, <laughs> starts going to the gym, starts kind of pumping themselves up <laughs> a little bit. You know what I mean? And then, um, then kind of made, you know, didn't wallow in self-pity. Like, I, I don't do that. I don't do that stuff very well. I don't. You know, I, it's just like, okay, you want to tell a story or not? Yeah. Fine, you know? So, um, yeah, and the results are sort of uh, are kind of coming in now with the, with the positive reviews, which is, which is really cool. Often when one <coughs> thinks um, of a low-budget Kiwi film, it's often followed by, it's probably going to be shit. But how do you feel The Last Saint overcomes the limitations of your budget, in your own opinion? 
Oh yeah, we, we just, um, everybody was accountable for what they were doing. So like for me as, as the director, you know, a lot of it is, um, is I've got to make the actors accountable for what they're doing, what they give, the art department, the camera person, the, 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 the wardrobe, the stunts. Like it was never a question of, okay, we haven't got any money, so do this. It was like, how can you be the best? And if you ain't going to give me the best, then you might as well not be here. But see, the subject matter of the film has affected like so many people within the industry. Like people that know people that have been troubled by addictions or had Paul relationships Holmes or gave massive praise yeah. at the script reading. Yeah, well, it wasn't only like Paul Holmes, man. Like he's the public guy. So, but there were so many people that came up to me quietly and were just like, man, you know, thank you for for wanting to tell this story. And this story is is so real, and I've had my life that's been affected by it and and turned upside down by it. And so I've just been waiting for this film. But I sort of had to, but I had to sort of judge balance that. By make, with making a good entertainment as well. Yeah. Because I don't want to make just a boring, preachy doco, like, drugs are bad. Because, <laughs> hello, you know what I mean? Yeah, there's I more mean, to it. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I, I love, like, Scarface, man. Like, you know, Tony Montana, right? Yeah. Like, the, he's, you know, he's the head of hip hop, you know? Like, everybody just goes in behind Scarface, you know? But when you're watching his movie, and you're watching his movie, and you know, far out, Cocaine is too much, it's like bad for you. <laughs> too much. It's bad for you, right? But like, um, but like, you know, if he comes out and says, yeah, I'm Tony Montana, don't do drugs, kids. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Was well, Scarface the, um, <clears throat> the, the key influence to Pinball, um, played by your brother, Joe? Oh, no, no, I mean, was... no, it's just, uh, no, uh, no, there's uh, pinballs, you know, I've uh, come across a few pinballs in my time, you know, and, and all that, and, you know, just really, you know, but it, it's really uh, interesting when, after an early read-through, John Barnett, who's the head of South Pacific Pictures, he, he was at the read-through, one of the early read-throughs, and he said, Ren, you've got to watch out because you're making your character, their character, their drug dealer is really charismatic, you know, and uh, kids are going to remember him, and I'm like saying, yeah, and? You know, isn't that what we want to do? It's an entertainment, you know? I mean, like I said, like, I remember Tony Montana, you know? I remember the Joker, yeah. you know? I mean, far out, you know? I, I remember Heath Ledger, man. I don't remember the dickhead in the black mask that's like putting on the fake voice, you know what I mean? Like, as an actor, that's who I'm drawn to. And that's like, and that's one of the things with Joe, is that he has gone deep into himself to create a character which is, you know, like Pimble would eat Jake the Muscle for breakfast, man. <laughs> just like, just put him out. Just, yeah. You know? Well, his, charis his charisma just pops off the screen almost as prominently as his abdomen. Um, <laughs> now, it, we're seeing a lot of we're seeing a lot of features go to video on demand, and New Zealand's starting to pick up that tr yeah. that trend with Tom Hearns' um, "Everything We Loved." Yeah. But you guys didn't um, solely go for that route. You no. pushed and pushed to get this into cinemas. So what would you say makes The Last Saint cinema worthy? Well, first off, I, I, you, know, I, you know, if that was my film, I never would have gone video on demand to start off with. I think it's just nuts yeah. to start off with. Like, really? You're going to open up in the movies and then you're going to say to guys, oh, yeah, you can sit in your sitting room and like stream it at the same time. I mean, it, I'd be interesting to know whether that was actually a success or not, because, you know, I think the film was, is a really good film, yeah. you know. Um, whereas, you know, The Last Saint, for me, I want to make film, so it was always going to be on the big screen. Um, uh, you know, um, the, the whole video on demand thing is something that's really, uh, that we're going through at the moment, we're working at it, like we've been made a pretty wicked deal. Yeah. Um, we've been offered a deal because people can see it generating big business at home um but for me like i'm of the age i grew up like wanting to go to the movies and sit in the dark and have popcorn and like watch it on a massive screen and kind of have that whole audience kind of response you know like i love it you know and, and uh so yeah i, I um I, I think that uh the, the, what those guys have, have done, you know, I applaud them for their bravery. Uh, but I don't know whether that's something that I would ever do. 
Not, not, yeah. not to start off with it. Okay. Yeah. Final question. Yeah. If you could recommend one self-funded New Zealand film to a younger version of you to inspire you to make films, what would that film be? That Kiwi film, that self-Kiwi, that self-funded Kiwi film. Oh, sorry, I don't understand. The oh, I say it pretty badly, but if you can, if you can, <laughs> my head, man. It's been a long week. I said like five sentences <laughs> in one. It's the temperature. Okay. <laughs> You're giving me another riddle, man. That's it. Okay. Um, say there was a younger version of you standing right there, and you had to recommend that person one self-funded Kiwi film to watch. What would that film be? Uh. <laughs> Where did you come up with these questions, man? <laughs> I don't know. I'm in a room like, by myself. In the you dark. know, I mean, look for me. Like, look, I didn't watch any. Um, I, I didn't watch any low-funded, self-funded thing or, or anything like that. Like, you know, I mean, you know, there's the classics of low-budget things. You know, like films like El Mariachi. Yeah. You know. Um, also, I heard that um, uh, Amores Peros, Life's a Bitch, by uh, Afonso Cuarón. The Mexican filmmaker. Oh, yeah. I heard that was really cheap as well. Um, but for me, it's like I said, if, if, uh, for young filmmakers out there, I'd say that at the moment there seems to be a huge leap between actually going to the 48 hour thing, which I've never done. All right, so let's make that I've never done that. Yeah. I, I have always mucked around with actors and video cameras. That sounds really dodgy. But, um, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but always, we always got together and we mucked around with scenes and improvs and stuff like that. And I, always, and I know a group of actors and really we get together and we do stuff that is like kind of out there. Um, and that is like, it's like training. You, you know what I mean? And, and um, there's, there's nothing like doing it, just going out there and doing it. So I guess... Um, because you're gonna learn the most from your from your big mistakes. Like that's the thing. Like I've <laughs> come on, man. I did soap opera for like five years to start off acting, man. Like, it ain't a mistake that I haven't made under the sun, which hasn't been on TV, man. <laughs> some would so, say mistakes. Some would say trash. Oh no, no, no. Look, man. Like far out. Look, and look, that's the thing. Like I'm I'm an old man, man. Like you know, I I know what I you know I know I got my team around me. I don't have to take myself. Seriously, because and if once you do, you, that's really boring. Yeah. But but you've got to really, you've got to be honest with what you know about the work, and you've got to know where you make a where you make a mistake or is something that could be done better. And that's just that's just by doing it. And so, you know, to all the young filmmakers out there, man, like go out there, do it. Surround yourself, have a really good crew, and have someone in the crew that's the real asshole who's really picky. Because you kind of need that guy. Yeah. No one will want to buy him a drink, right? He'll get no, he'll get no tail. But that's the guy that, that you need to have in your group, or, yeah. the, or, the, or, the, or the girl to have in your group. Because that is the one that's gonna, that's gonna break you, that you're gonna learn from and get better and better as filmmakers. Ren, thank you very much. Oh, awesome, man. Cheers, bro. <laughs>